Hello everyone. In this video, I will go over my solution to the problem named maximum array taken from today's code forces round. In this problem, we are basically given an array A of n integers which are greater than or equal to 0. And Mihai wants to create a new array B in the following format or by performing the following operations. Mihai will choose an integer k and they will append the max of the first k numbers in the array A to the end of array B and erase them from array A. So the remaining positions get shifted to the beginning of the array A. And since he loves big arrays, he wants the new array B to be the lexicographically maximum array. And lexicographically maximum basically means that the numbers should be as big as possible. And if the numbers are the biggest possible, then the length should be maximized. So for example, um, the array 1, 2, 3 is lexicographically bigger than the array 1, 1. However, 1, 2, 3 is less than 1, 2, 3, 4 because 1, 2, 3, 4 is a bigger array uh, of, the, uh, of, of a bigger length but containing the same subsequence. So this is the mathematical definition of uh, uh, array being lexicographically greater than the other one. So they either either the first array is greater than the second array at some position i or they are basically um, the length for the first array is greater than the length of the second array and they are the same for all uh, remaining positions. So that's what the lexicographically uh, biggest means and the max is the minimal non-negative integer which is not there in the set of uh, non-negative integers. So the max of any array can be found out by finding the smallest integer which is not there in the set. So you, you have to essentially start from zero. You can increase the max by one repeatedly until you reach an index which is not there in the array. So for example, if you had uh, the uh, if you had the set to be one comma two comma zero comma four, then in that case the set is one two zero four. That's why. Um, 0 is there, 1 is there, 2 is there, but 3 is not there, so the max is 3. And um, you could consider a few examples to understand what the max is. And basically, we want to maximize the max at each uh, time. So that is actually a key observation from the problem statement itself. Each time, we want to maximize the max because we are essentially adding the max of the first k, op, uh, first k numbers to the array B. So each time, we want to ensure that we choose an integer k such that the max of the first k numbers is the maximum possible. And um, let's consider an example to understand that. So let's say in the first example, we have the array 10203. Then in that case, for the array 10203, we want the max to be the largest possible because that value will be added to the array b. And we also want the max to be the smallest index so that, so that basically the size of the array b is maximized. So first we want to maximize the elements and then we want to maximize the size. That's why the key greedy idea, like even before we look at the examples from the problem statement itself, the key greedy idea is, is first we need to maximize the max of the first key elements in the array a and we need to choose the smallest location at which this max occurs so that we are maximizing the length and each time we keep repeating this process of choosing k elements from the array A or k consecutive elements which have the maximum max and which occur at the smallest position so that the length can be elongated for array B because that's what uh, maximizes the lexicographic value. This is uh, basically what the lexicographically uh, largest array B would look like from the problem statement itself. So let's try to do that with the first example. So you should realize that uh, in the first example the max can be 0 because the 0 occurs. Then we increase the max to be 1. 1 also occurs, so we increase the max to 2. 2 also occurs, so we increase the max to 3. 3 occurs, so we increase the max to 4. And when we reach 4, we know that 4 does not occur in the array. And that's basically why um, we will break at 4 and we know that the max is 4. So we will print 4 and we have reached the end of the array. So 4 will be the output, like array B will contain only one element, 4. And you can verify that that's the correct output. 4 is the only element in the array B. In the second example, if you do a similar process, 
So initially we want the max to be, we start from the max is 0, the max is 0 because 0 occurs at this position, then we increase the max to be 1, 1 occurs at this position, so we increase the max to 2, 2 occurs um, over here beforehand only, so currently this is the segment which we are looking at, then 3 also appears, 4 also appears, so we know that the max is 5 because 5 does not appear in the array, and we know that the smallest position where the max is 5 is this segment, that's why we will choose this segment and we will set the max to 5. Then we remove all these elements. So the remaining elements are this. And in this, we again do the same process of starting from the max is 0. So initially the max is 0 over there. 0 appears in the segment. So we will increase the max by 1 to become 1. 1 does not appear in these two elements. That's why 1 is the second element. And we will print 1 as the second value in the array B. So that's why 5 comma 1 is the sequence. So that was the second example. Now let's look at the last example just to get a better idea of the general case. In the last example, when we start from the max is 0, 0 appears. So we increase the max to 1. 1 appears in the array. So we increase the max to 2. Now since 2 appears in the array, we'll increase the max to 3 and 3 does not appear. So we know the max is 2. Now till what segment will we choose the array? As the key idea which I suggested over here is, we want to maximize the length of array B. This means we want to minimize K every time, every iteration we want to minimize K. And basically every time we add a new value to the array B, we want to minimize the value of K because we are choosing K elements from the array A. So that's why we will choose the minimum value of K such that 0, 1 and 2 all appear in the array. So in that case, this is going to be the minimum index. So we will choose this segment to be k and we will add 3 to the array. So 3 is initially added. Then we look at the next segment. This is the remaining elements. So again we set the max to be 0. 0 appears. We set the max to 1. 1 appears. We set the max to 2. 2 does not appear. So this is the segment. Then we go to the next. We go after that. So we add 2 to the array and we go after that. After that we take 0. 0 appears. 1. 1 appears. 2 does not appear. So this is the minimum segment because in this the max is 2. So we choose the segment, we add 2 to the array and we are done. Only the last element is left and we know that the max of just the element 1 is 0. So we add 0 to the array B and in this way we can each time start the max to be 0. We can increase the max to 1 and keep going as long as the element appears and when the element does not appear we add that value of the max to the array and we basically remove all the other elements. So that's the general algorithm. We will keep trying to maximize the max. We will initialize max to be 0. And while max appears in the array, so while the frequency of max or you could use whatever method you want uh, is greater than 0, we will uh, basically add the max to the array. And we will um, increase the max by 1. And we can do some operations. And then um, we basically know that when the max does not appear, that's going to be added to the array B. And then we basically, yeah, we will uh, also keep track of the index, um, the minimum index. So for each element which appears, we will choose the minimum index so far, like in the new array. So let's say for example, we were, uh, so initially, like in the last example, we took these elements. So the minimum index of the one was this value. That's why we choose the maximum value among all the minimum indices. So this is the minimum index and this is going to be the first key elements. Then again we repeat the process. We choose the minimum index of a 1 which is here and minimum index of a 0 which is here. That's why we need to take this whole segment. And then in the third element for the array B, we choose the minimum index of a 1 which is over here and minimum index of a 0 which is over here. So we take the max of these two. So that's going to be our next segment. And the final segment is just the one. So uh, in this way, we keep track of all the indices and we will choose the maximum of all the minimum indices so far in order to basically uh, ensure that uh, we are choosing the minimum segment and the segment should contain all the elements uh, up to the max minus one. So now let's look at some more implementation details, how we can efficiently implement this algorithm. So for some of the implementation details, we will use a vector vector in pause to store the set of positions for each index i. 
because we know that all the numbers are up to n so we use this constraint to our advantage by storing a vector vector in pause pause of i shows the positions where number i appears in theory this helps us in the main part of the algorithm which is to each time take the smallest index um, from the array and that's why we use the pause because pause of i will give us the index of i so let's look at the main details of the uh, algorithm so we initialize the current beginning of the subsegment b1 note that we are looking at subsegments which are um, contiguous and which are non overlapping because like in the last example this was our first subsegment this was our second subsegment this was our third subsegment and this was our fourth subsegment that's why the subsegment will be of a form l to r and we initialize l to be 1 and we repeatedly perform the following operations while the l is less than or equal to n we will initialize the current right end point to be the same as the left end point and so the current subsegment is i to i and we will keep on trying to ensure that the max is maximized so initially we will set max to be 0 and we are essentially keeping track of the max uh, we are iterating over the max we are trying to iterate over the maximum possible value of the max so while this max is less than or equal to n plus 1 because we know that the elements can be up to n so the max has to be less than or equal to n plus 1 so while this max is less than or equal to n plus 1 and the first position of max is there which is greater than or equal to i because we know that i is the left end point and we know that max should appear at some index ahead of the left end point so we can use a lower bound method in this pause so if you uh, look at the code like if you look at the code snippet then it will be something like if lower bound of pause of i i mean pause of max dot begin comma pause of max dot end if lower bound of that with the value which is basically i if there is some uh, iterator in the pause of max uh, in the positions of max which appears at an position greater than or equal to i then um, in that case we will basically know that um, there is some index which appears greater than or equal to i so we know that the current value of max appears in the subsequence that's why we will increase the max by 1 and we will increase the right endpoint to contain the occurrence so we will set the right endpoint to be the maximum of the right endpoint comma the first position of max which is greater than or equal to i so we will extend the right endpoint to be the maximum of the current value and the new right endpoint and we will um, do this repeatedly while the max is less than or equal to n plus 1 and then we will uh, then we know that we have covered the whole range so we will set i to be the next endpoint plus 1 and like before this we will also add so b dot push back the value of max and we will also set the current left end point to be the previous right end point plus 1 so this way we go to the next subsegment and we will set the right end point to be l this way we will uh, repeatedly iterate while the left end point is less than or equal to n and in this way we know that we are successfully adding the correct values of max to the array b and in the end we will just print the b array now an important note about the time complexity is that it may seem as if we are iterating over a brute force for the max and it may seem it is potentially n square because there are two loops essentially one loop is for the left end point and one loop is for the max but actually this is o of n or o of n log n if you count the lower bound and the reason why this is o of n log n is because each time we are each time when we update the value of max we are also increasing the right end point this means that we are covering the endpoints for the max and that's why the total number of operations performed will actually be of n because we are essentially going through all the elements exactly once and this max value just adds another o of n and um, you should spend a few minutes thinking about why this works why it works within the uh, time limit very comfortably and why it's n log n so i'll show you the code implementing the same idea so in the code for each test case i take in the value of n i store the array a and i store the positions uh, the size of the positions can be up to like n plus 1 
and in plus two just in case you want to check for the largest value of the max so the max can be equal to in if max becomes equal to n plus one or uh, this means that position of um, n plus one is empty so we need to have the n plus two size and array is n plus one size because we are using one based indexing then for each value we'll, for each i we will take in a of i and we will add the index i um, to the set of positions of a of i and um, for that we also need like to use some definition so we will use vi for vector int vvi for vector vector int and we will use pb for pushback so that's the definitions and um, macros basically and now we will initialize the left endpoint to be 1 we will use the vector int b uh, to show the final answer and we will basically while the left endpoint is less than or equal to n we will initialize the max to be 0 we will initialize the right endpoint to be i because the current subsegment is i comma i and the final subsegment becomes l comma r and while this max is less than or equal to n plus 1 we will look at the iterator which accesses the first a position of the max greater than or equal to l and if this iterator is the end of the max or position then we know that uh, no occurrence of max is there of max in the range i to n and this means that the max does not appear in the array a so we will break otherwise we will basically set the right endpoint to be the maximum of the right endpoint and this particular value of the iterator once you dereference it and in this way we are essentially the whole loop will essentially be o of n because like um, because it does not it basically iterates through all elements once and this max value keeps increasing the right endpoint so you can be assured that uh, the number of operations is actually o of n because each time we are increasing the right endpoint and uh, in the end we just print in the size of the array and the elements of the array so I'll just submit this code to see that it gets accepted so as you could see my code got accepted uh, comfortably within the time time limit and I didn't even use um, fast IO if you use fast IO it's going to be much lesser than this so I hope you like this problem and my solution if you had any doubts do leave them in the comments down below and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up thank you